Balaga here. This podcast is from an article in JAMA titled Association Between Initiation of Pulmonary Rehab After Hospitalization for COPD and One-Year Survival Among Medicare Benefits, authored by Dr. Peter Lidner, MD, MSc, et al. The, auth- the corresponding author is based at University of Massachusetts, Bay State, Springfield, Massachusetts. Meta-analysis have suggested that initiating pulmonary rehab after an exacerbation of COPD was associated with improved survival. Although the number of patients studied was small and heterogeneity was high. Current guidelines recommend that patients enroll in pulmonary rehabilitation after hospital discharge. The key question asked by these investigators is, is initiation of pulmonary rehab after hospitalization for COPD associated with better survival? Given that 15.5 million individuals in the US were reported to have COPD in 2015 and exacerbations resulted in more than 1.5 million emergency department visits and nearly 700,000 hospitalizations annually between 2001 and 2012, the opportunities to improve care are urgent. The period after hospital discharge is marked by high levels of healthcare utilization and an elevated risk of mortality. In fact, among Medicare beneficiaries between 2008 and 2014, one year mortality after discharge was estimated to be as high as 26%. Therefore, the objective of this study was to determine the association between between the initiation of pulmonary rehabilitation within 90 days of hospital discharge and one year survival. This was a retrospective inception cohort study using claims data from fee-for-service Medicare beneficiaries hospitalized for COPD 2014 at 4,446 acute care hospitals in the US. The final data of follow-up was December 31st, 2015. The uh, pulmonary rehabilitation was initiated within 90 days of hospital discharge. The primary outcome was all-cause mortality at one year. Time from discharge to death was modeled using Cox regression with time varying exposure to pulmonary rehabilitation, adjusting for mortality and for unbalanced characteristics and propensity to initiate pulmonary rehabilitation. The authors used additional analysis to evaluate the association between timing of pulmonary rehab and mortality and and between number of sessions completed and mortality. What did the investigators find? In this retrospective observational study that included 197,376 Medicare beneficiaries discharged after hospitalization for COPD, initiation of pulmonary rehabilitation within three months of discharge, compared with later or no initiation of pulmonary rehabilitation, was significantly associated with lower risk of mortality at one year, hazard ratio of 0.63. In this study cohort of 197,376 patients, the mean age was 76.9 years, 58.6% were women, and 2,721, that is 1.5% only, initiated pulmonary rehab within 90 days of discharge. A total of 19.4%, that is 38,302 individuals, died within a year of discharge, including 7.3% of patients who initiated pulmonary rehabilitation within 90 days, and 19.6% of patients who initiated pulmonary rehabilitation after 90 days, or not at all. Initiation within 90 days was significantly associated with lower risk of mortality over one year. Absolute risk difference 
was minus 6.7 percent 95 percent confidence interval minus 7.9 percent to minus 5.6 percent hazard ratio 0 0.63 with a p-value of 0 0.001 Initiation of pulmonary rehabilitation was significantly associated with lower mortality across start dates, ranging from 30 days or less. The absolute risk dif difference was minus 4.6%. 95% confidence interval was minus 4.9% to minus 3.2%. Hazard ratio is 0.74. For which the 95% confidence interval was 0 0.67 to 0 0.82, a p value of 0 0.001 to 61 to 90 days after discharge. Every three additional sessions was significantly associated with lower risk of mortality. Hazard ratio 0 0.91, 95% confidence interval 0 0.85 to 0 0.98, and the p value equal to 0 0.01. Given the significant lower risk of mortality at one year when pulmonary rehab was initiated within three months of discharge, the authors concluded that these findings support guideline recommendations for pulmonary rehabilitation after hospitalization for COPD, although the potential for residual confounding exists and further research is needed. Pulmonary rehabilitation involves exercise training and self-management education to improve both physical and psychological well-being. It's effective at relieving shortness of breath, increasing exercise tolerance, and improving health-related quality of life for individuals with all stages of COPD and may also reduce healthcare utilization. Prior research has shown that Few patients complete a course of pulmonary re rehabilitation because of a lack of physician referral, a lack of access to facilities, and a variety of patient-related barriers. While pulmonary rehabilitation has been traditionally viewed as beneficial for symptomatic, medically stable patients, this study reinforces that its role after an exacerbation when patients are at high risk of experiencing a self-reinforcing spiral of dyspnea-related deconditioning. In an accompanying editorial titled Pulmonary Rehabilitation and Improved Survival for Patients with COPD, authored by Dr. Caroline Rochester, MD from Yale, and Dr. Anne Holland, PT, PhD from Monash University, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, make a call saying that it's time that one of the most effective therapies for patients with COPD and other uh, chronic lung diseases be utilized routinely and proactively. In addition to improving exercise tolerance and quality of life and reducing symptoms, disease exacerbations, hospitalizations and readmissions, participating in pulmonary rehab after hospitalization for COPD exacerbation, as this JAMA article suggests, is associated with lower all-cause mortality. They go on to say, these findings should serve to encourage healthcare systems to increase funding for and use of pulmonary rehabilitation services for patients with COPD. This study raises the question in my mind, whether cardiac rehab, also the biggest bang for your buck, the patients get is if it is initiated within 90 days of a, a sentinel event, like acute myocardial infarction or acute exacerbation for heart failure. 